إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise belongs to Allah We praise Him We seek His forgiveness and His guidance we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our own ego and the evil results of our deeds. Anyone whom Allah guides, then no one can lead him astray. And anyone whom Allah leaves to stray, then there is no one that can guide him. And I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship and there are no real gods except the one and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is alone and has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his final messenger to mankind and uh, all the people and all the jinn. Allah says what, what could mean, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, have taqwa for Allah. As it is his right, the amount to the degree that he deserves. And don't you dare die except that you die as a Muslim. He also says, O oh, mankind. Fear your Lord, have taqwa for your Lord. Who is your Lord? The one who created you all from one soul, Adam. And created from that soul its mate, Eve. And raised up and spread from the two of them many men and women. And fear Allah. 
the one whom you ask things for. And don't cut ties with the wombs that bore you. Indeed, Allah above us all is a guardian watcher. He also says, O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, have taqwa for Allah. And in light of that, say a word that goes straight to the point. If you do this, he will make right something that you made wrong. He will correct our deeds and forgive us for our crimes. And whoever is already obeying Allah, and obeying his messenger has already achieved the highest ambition anyone could ever hope to reach. As for what follows, then we have to realize that the best speech, the best thing we could be reading, and we need to respect this and try to think about this in the light of the things that we try to learn. Why do we read the newspaper to learn something? Why do we study on the internet or read any book so we can get more knowledge, beneficial knowledge to help us in our dunya, help us traverse this life? We have to understand that the best speech, the best writing, the most perfect and excellent thing that we should and be, be reading and, and tying ourselves to is the book of Allah, the Qur'an. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the most evil, the most atrocious of affairs, the worst thing that we can do is invent something in Islam. Bring something to this perfect deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not command us to do. We have to understand that. And that everything that we do stick into Islam is a path that leads us off the straight path. And anything that deviates ever so slightly how small it may be seen to us, it eventually leads us astray. And every path that leads astray eventually ends up in hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt. Everybody. Everybody is going to taste death. Everyone is going to die. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. And maybe we don't think about it sometimes. The reality of what it will be like, of what it should mean to us, death and dying. And Allah tells us, Allah tells us, and no soul, nobody has permission. No one is going to go to die except after Allah gives him permission. No, it's no soul is going to die except with the permission of Allah. This is something, Kitab in Muwajjila. This is a period of time that has been Qadr. You know, it has been decided. It's already written 50,000 years before we die, before we're born, before we come into existence. It has already been decided the moment we're going to be born and the moment we're going to leave this present existence that we call life. It's already done. And one of the things that we can get out of this second ayah is that when someone dies, this is something that Allah has decided. 
This is something that Allah has decided so we can be comfortable with that. We can get, we don't have to grieve so much because really our grievance is what, what? Because we are missing that person. Because the Prophet Sallallahu he told us, when someone passes away, we hurry up and we get them in the ground. We get them under, off the face of the earth. If it was a righteous person, then we're giving him relief from us, from this dunya. And if it was our unrighteous person, then we're getting relief from him. At any rate, let's hurry up and get the person down and on, off the surface. Everything is set for us. The saddest day I have ever tasted was the day the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died. That was the saddest day of my life. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, it was between what? Dhur and Asr. Because the Lord had already been prayed. And so the people, they were so overwhelmed with the situation, they didn't think about the Salah. Imagine. Imagine. All of Medina, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is dead. And Umar ibn Khattab, he's standing up in front of the people saying, look, y'all got it mixed up. Really, what happened to the Prophet ﷺ is what happened to Musa. You know, he was supposed to go away for 40 days and he's going to come back. So you, you got it wrong. The Prophet is not dead, sallallahu alayhi wa And anybody who says that, I'm going to chop their head off. This is what Umar ibn al-Khattab was saying. Till Abu Bakr showed up. Abu Bakr showed up. He didn't even stop by Umar ibn al-Khattab and those people, the Sahabi. The greatest people in the world after the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Saints, all of them. Waliullah, awliya. The friends of Allah. That Allah tells us that. The only ones we're sure of. He walks past them to his daughter's house. He sees the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has passed away. He's dead. He gives his friend a farewell kiss. And then he comes out. And he recites, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ رُسُلٌ And he says to everybody there, and he puts his, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ And then he gets in Umar's face. Now can you imagine that? Umar ibn Khattab is a genuine giant. A real big man that when he got on his horse, his toes dragged in the sand. When he's walking with normal people, it looked like he was riding on a camel and they were walking on their feet. It's a giant, a big man, not a thin man. Nowhere is it described that he was thin, he was big. So his weight and his height were, compar were, co they were comparison to each other. He wasn't really tall, he was just big. And Abu Bakr al-Sadiq is a little, naif, thin man. His clothes hang on him. So much so we have the hadith of his izah slipping off of him sometime because he was so thin. He gets up in Umar's face and says, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ رَسُولٌ أَفَإِنْ مَاتَ أَوْ قُتِلَ مِنْ قَلَبْتُ عَلَىٰ أَقْدَانِكُمْ He said, if it is going to be that he died or he's killed, you're going to turn on your heels? You're going to turn away from this deen because the Prophet ﷺ died? Everyone in the masjid of the Prophet began to recite, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا الرَّسُولُ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ And they started to file out and go to their particular places and talk to their families and deal with the crisis at hand. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ passing away, the end of revelation. Safety is no more going to be on the earth without the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine, any issue you have, you just go to the Prophet. Anything you want to know, the Messenger of Allah Fi Hudurina is present on earth. 
you know certain things are not going to happen when the Prophet is there. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then the Asr time comes. Salatul Asr. And look at Abu Bakr as Siddiq. He's got the mind for Islam right now. Everybody is just in a daze. But Abu Bakr as Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. It's time for Salah. The Prophet is going, we're going to continue practicing Islam. Our commitment, our allegiance is first and foremost to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because he's the messenger of Allah, we followed him. And we still follow him. So Salah came, it's time for Salatul Asr. He tries to find Bilal to call the Adhan. He finds him. Bilal's doing his thing, you know. He's grieving over the Prophet. He says, Bilal, Adhin. Ya Mu'adhin. Adhin. Oh, Mu'adhin. Call the Adhan. Bilal looks at him and says, I am the Mu'adhin of Rasulullah. I am the Mu'adhin of the Messenger of Allah. La ghayru. I'm not the Mu'adhin for nobody else. I will never call the Adhan for anybody after the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a beautiful position. You don't want to step down. He don't want to go from the position of calling the Adhan for the Messenger of Allah for calling the Adhan for Abu Bakr as Siddiq. But it's understandable. The Prophet Sallallahu was everything for them after Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So Abu Bakr as Siddiq he can't find anybody to call the Adhan. So he does what he has to do. He climbs up and he calls the Adhan himself. Now anybody knows anything about Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the most courageous man in history after the prophets? And we say courageous because he gave everything he had away for Islam. And the people that we look at and outwardly see as brave and, and, and bold, like Umar ibn Khattab, gave half. So put that in comparison to the heart. And the only reason you give everything is because you have confidence that you can get more. This was his courageousness. When everybody hesitated or had an issue to think about or talk about when the Prophet ﷺ came to them with Islam, Abu Bakr didn't hesitate. He was called a siddiq He validated everything the Prophet ﷺ said. Without question or doubt or hesitation. He didn't weeble wobble like they said. He didn't give in. He climbs up the minbar or the minaret, let's say. And he calls the adhan. He tries to. Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr anhu could not complete the adhan. He got to Muhammadan Rasulullah and he couldn't say it. He said Muhammad and he broke down and started crying. So he tried again. Muhammad and he couldn't get the words out. And then he finally said Muhammadun Rasulullah and he started crying in all of Medina. It says at that point the whole Medina broke into tears. The Ummah, that Ummah, realizing the devastation that's happened to the Ummah with the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we're living today with the crisis of that death still now. We're still living under the crisis of the death of the Messenger of Allah. Look at us. Look at us. We are not representing what they represented. We don't realize what our commitments are, what our obligations are, and what we're a part of in the grand scheme of things and the greatness of the things that we have by being Muslim, accepting Islam as our deen, as our way of life. That's not just for the dunya. We have an opportunity to practice a deen that transcends this life and takes us to safety on Yom Al-Qiyamah and in the grave. 
And debt is not something that Allah has allowed lots of people. أَكْثَرُهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ كَافِرُونَ أَكْثَرُهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ Most of the people are corrupt. Most of the people make shirk. Most of the people disbelieve. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored me. That's all I care about. And that's what I'm going to care about. Yom Qiyamah. Nafsi, nafsi. What is Allah? The messengers of Allah. On the last day, we're going to go to Adam, our father. Through which all of us are created. We have this arrogance of nationalism and tribalism. We are from the same father. We all interrelated somehow. But the shaitan gets us all twisted. We're going to go to Adam. This is our reality. We already know. And he's going to say, nafsi, nafsi. I'm only concerned with myself. I'm only concerned with me. On that day. And if that's the case. With Adam, with all the prophets except Muhammad Sallallahu we, we, we have something to look after. I'm happy that Allah favored me with his love. I don't know about you. I'm happy. I am so happy. You know, I was a Catholic. My mother's a Catholic. And that's a hard reality to deal with. When your, when your people pass away, <laughs> when your people pass away, you can make up to them what you can to them in the dunya. I can't do that. When your people pass away, your people is Muslim. Your mother's Muslim, your father's Muslim. You can make hajj for them if they didn't make hajj. You can give sadaqah for them if they didn't make sadaqah enough. You can do things for them. When my mother passed away, I can't even make dua for her. Do you understand the net money that you have? Kullu nafsin dha'iqatun maut. Every soul is going to taste death, brothers. Have you heard about Islam? Have you heard about Islam? This dean, the newest dean on the planet, is the best thing out there. The real deal. All we have to do is surrender. All we have to do is surrender and just practice this dean, this beautiful dean. Follow the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's who we gave our allegiance to. Right? I'm really happy. That Allah bless me to become a Muslim and I'm, I hope that you will be happy with the ni'mah. That not only did Allah bless you to be Muslim, but he blessed you with a mother and a father. The Muslims, cousins and family. I wish I had them. I wish I saw my father just print two rakah. Just one rakah. No, I wish I had that. You know, I wish you don't know. You really don't know. Having mothers, that's whores. You know, y'all don't know. No one's seen your mom's drunk. You don't know what it's like. Then it's hard seeing that coming to Islam and you can't even express that to them. You can't even talk to them about it because it it's not accepted. It's not accepted, you know? And then to see you brothers, some of you brothers really, it's like crazy. And you want to act like us. You want, you want what we got. You want this. You know, your brothers come over here, you want to you dress like my brother? You don't know what we went through. You don't know why he's a straight. You, you got a blessing. <coughs> you can't count. You can't enumerate the amount of blessings that you have with being Muslim and having a Muslim family. Muslim family. Everybody loves their families. Allah tells us, what do we recite? And don't cut ties with the wounds that bore you. But there comes a point in my life that I have to cut ties with the wounds that but bore us when they pass away. I want y'all to think about that. Think about that.
الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على مصطفى وآله وصحبه ومن اتقى أما بعد All praise belongs to Allah and that's enough for a man to understand It's enough والصلاة والسلام The source of peace and perfection be upon the best of those sent The Prophet Muhammad, the chosen one and his family and his followers and all that follow him until the last day. We say in the Shahada, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But many times we don't understand what that is supposed to mean for us. So I want to remind us with something. It's a children's poem. However, it might be pertinent to some of us because it explains what it means when we say Muhammadan Rasulullah. Then every Muslim must concur Muhammad is the messenger sent by Allah and so we trust everything he said to us. We must obey his orders and reject the things he called haram. All sacred laws must come from him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This encompasses the meaning of Muhammadun Rasulullah. Many times we talk about La ilaha illallah and we don't get to understand what does it mean Muhammadun Rasulullah. When we say La ilaha illallah, the mafhum, the understanding is, is a rejection of shirk. Singling and isolating out Allah for our ibadah, for our allegiance here. But likewise, we make a pledge of allegiance to the Messenger of Allah, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, al-Mustafa. We make an allegiance to him. And then every Muslim must concur. And the opposite of the, the allegiance to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which is following his sunnah, the opposite of that is making bid'ah. Just like la ilaha illallah calls us to tawheed and tells us to get away from shirk, Muhammadun Rasulullah, it calls us to follow the sunnah and to leave off innovation, bid'ah. That is doing anything that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't command us to do as an act of worship. Because every Muslim must concur, Muhammad is the messenger. He's the messenger sent by Allah. So the first point that we have to understand about Muhammadun Rasulullah that we say when we say Muhammadun Rasulullah is that we're bearing witness and swearing that we swear that Muhammad was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sent by Allah and so we trust everything he said to us. The second point when we say Muhammadun Rasulullah, that we have to understand that not only is he the actual physical messenger sent by Allah, meaning the messenger of Allah, we trust everything, kullu ma akhbarana bi, everything he told us, we believe, just like we see it right now. He told us about the things that's going to happen in the hereafter. He told us what's going to happen in the grave. He told us what's going to happen here on earth. He tells us how many angels are assigned to each people and what time they flip, they, they flip and change. Everything the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, we have to accept and believe it. If you don't, you don't say Muhammad on Rasulullah understanding it properly. So that's the second point. Not that he was just not that, not just that he was sent by Allah, but that we trust everything he said. We must obey his orders. We add, it says, we must obey his orders and the third point is that we have to obey. We have to obey the orders Amri Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Everything he ordered us to do, we do. Without question, without hesitation. We do. Because obeying him is obeying Allah. Who doesn't understand that needs to read the Quran. Obeying the messenger is obeying Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must obey his orders and reject the things he called haram. Anything the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the fourth point. Anything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
ascribed with being haram, illegal, we not only have to leave that thing off, but we have to call it illegal too. It's not enough. It is not enough that we just don't do it. For example, there's these people, the homosexuals out there. It's not enough. As a, as a person came and said this, a Muslim said, well, you know, I ain't got nothing. It ain't, no, it ain't no problem to me. I ain't got nothing against them. What do you mean? Well, I'm not going to do that, but I ain't got nothing against them. This is a wrong understanding. You do got something against that. Because not only it's not good enough that you don't be a homosexual, because it's haram, it's not about being homosexual, it's about this thing is illegal. Anything that Allah said is illegal, then we say it's illegal. We say it's wrong. So you got to say, no, it's wrong. We're not doing that, that's illegal. Whatever it is, I'm just using that as an example because that's what the lady said. Okay? So we have to understand it's not enough for us not to make zina. It's not enough for us not to steal or do riba, but we have to say those acts are wrong. Those acts are haram and illegal according to me because that's my belief. So we, have to, we must obey his orders and reject the things he called haram. All sacred laws must come from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All our sacred laws, which is the fifth point. All of our legislation, our laws must come from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran is sim in, in, in this site is our constitution and those hadith, those authentically narrated hadith are the actuation of the law, the precedences of case law, how to apply that Quran. What was Aisha asked? What was the character? What was the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam allowed? And then she said he was a walking Quran. So he is the embodiment of the Quran and how he sallallahu alayhi wasallam ordered, commanded, acted, and allowed. This is our legislation. This is our law. Every moment in your life, one of five rulings applies to whatever you're doing. It is either obligatory, meaning Allah's Messenger ordered you to do it, or it is something illegal, haram, that Allah's Messenger told you not to do it. Or it's something that you are encouraged to do, recommended, mustahab or mandub, which the Messenger of Allah encouraged you but didn't make it demanded on you. Or it's something that's makruh, meaning that the Messenger of Allah said don't do it, but he didn't make it a demand that you don't do it, meaning you're not going to get a sin for not, not doing it or doing it. Or it is permissible. Permissible just means you can do it or leave it. Every moment you're sleeping, you're walking, you're talking, even you're thinking has a ruling as we find in those hadith in 40 hadith in Nawawi that if a man has the idea of doing something haram and he don't do it then he gets a good reward so you get rewarded for your thoughts so everything and that, that everything you do has one of those rulings so we go back and say Muhammadun Rasulullah and understand that we're making allegiance saying, we swear, we bear witness, we support and we have our allegiance to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the one sent by Allah, number one. We trust whatever he said. He said it, it's true. Somebody said he's not doing it, they're the liars. They're Sadaqa Rasulullah, who was Sadaqul Masduq. He is the one, the most truthful one that has to be believed. So we, we bear witness that he's the messenger of Allah. We bear witness that he always spoke the truth. We obey his orders and we reject everything he said was illegal. And our life, our legislation is based in only taking from him.